what do you need to consider when selecting an academic progress monitoring tool? Another point is that whatever progress monitoring measure you use, you have to be able to administer weekly. And for this, I want to encourage you to take a lot of time to look at the tools chart and decide which measure to use. And you may need additional information beyond that. Some progress monitoring systems are not designed to be administered every week. Some of them are designed to be measured every two weeks. And that's not frequent enough for the purposes of measuring intensive intervention. So look carefully to make sure that the assessment can be administered uh, very often. Also check to find out how long it takes to administer. Some progress monitoring assessments only take a few minutes. Some of them can take up to 20 minutes. And if they take a long time, it's going to be problematic in terms of doing weekly measurements. So make sure you select one that is, takes a reasonable amount of time. Another point about choosing a measure is to make sure that whatever measure you choose, it has reliability and validity data. One popular system for collecting data on oral reading fluency is the running record. Teachers College running records are a formal system for examining students' uh, reading fluency. It also comes with comprehension questions to support the, uh, the fluency data. The running records can provide important and useful diagnostic data, both because they include a way to analyze students' errors and because they have um, sort of comprehension questions that go with them. But they are not data you can use for progress monitoring. One reason you can't use running records as progress monitoring data is that even the formal running records haven't been equated. In other words, the developers of the running records haven't verified that every, let's say, level C passage is exactly the same in terms of difficulty by administering it to a large group of students and assuring that students get a similar score um, on every form C that's created. So, it's hard to know if you give students a C if another C is going to be the same level. So another reason that running records can't be used as progress monitoring is because um, they're not what we call equal interval data. So the distance, say, between a level B and a level C may not be the same as the distance between a level C and a level D. In other words, we can't say that going from A to B to C to D to E shows a real sort of slope of improvement. A to B might show a lot of improvement, and B to C very little, and C to D more. And so those, have, those, those don't allow us to say that a student is making improvement in a sort of linear way. And when we look at students' improvement in grade levels, we absolutely want to be able to say that the change from one to another is sort of a continuous change. Certainly students are getting better when they go from, an, from a B to a C or a D to an E or whatever it is. And that's great, and those are good diagnostic data to sort of show the students making improvement, but they're not progress monitoring. So if you're collecting running record data for the purpose of diagnosing students' problems, you should continue to do that. But in addition, you must collect data using a valid and reliable progress monitoring system. And unfortunately, running records don't meet those criteria. There are not norms for the running records, and there aren't data to show their validity, so it's critical that you use something like any of the measures that have reliability and validity data on the tools chart.